Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah, man. Got a radio show. Do you understand that? I'm telling you, God been big in my life. I'm not going to kid you. I'm telling you, and he'll do the same thing for you. God God is a gentleman. You know, I, I want to I wanna point that out to you. God is an absolute gentleman. He will not come in unless he's invited. He don't just barge into your life. He gives us the power of choice. You know, if you say you got it, I don't need you, he lets you have it. If you say, I need you, come see about me, he right there. It's just a real simple thing, man. So I always say to people this, if you've gotten yourself into something, and please know I have. I, I, man, see that that's why I'm so adamant about it, because I've gotten myself in some circumstances and positions in my life, and boy, let me tell you something, I've had some low moments, man. I've had some moments where I did not know what to do. I didn't know what was next. I didn't know how to go about it. I didn't have no more ideas. I was stuck. I thought a couple of times, well, might not make it past this one. But then if I don't make it past it, what's going to happen? And then I held on to this little thing that my mother kept talking to me about. She said, sometimes, son, when you ain't, ain't got nothing else in you, just hope. She said, just hope it'll be all right. You know, and what I've learned in my life is that hope is the beginning of faith. Hope is just, is there a possibility out there for me? I sure hope something happened. See, uh, hope hope is okay, man. Because like I say, for me, the way I've lived my life, hope was the beginning of faith. It was just the idea. It's just the thought that something could change for me, that something could be a little bit different for me, that maybe, man, just maybe, for some reason, I could be saved. I could be rescued. Things could turn around. It could head in the other direction. Maybe I could quit messing up. Maybe somebody will forgive me. Maybe somebody will just say, all right, I don't know. But I can't count the times I've been in that position. But then once I hope a little bit, and then I remember also my mother because she was a Sunday school teacher. She taught me the most valuable lesson I've ever learned in my life. Nothing 
has been greater in my life than my faith. She taught me to pray. Mama used to say, when it get real dark for you, son, prayer changes things. She said, when you seem like you lost and you can't find your way, stop and pray. She said, because prayer changes things. You know, when you get a point in your life when you've done all you can do and you can't do no more and you just don't know what to do next, she says, stop, son, pray. And combine that prayer with that hope that you got. She said, because that hope is the beginning of faith. She said, if you pray just hoping, she said, if God come through for you, that'll give you confidence that he can do it again. And then after a while, you quit hoping. She said, and you start believing. She said, and that's when you're on to something. If you can turn that hope into belief, that hope into faith, the ability to believe in something that you can't see. But the key, though, to faith is you're believing in something that you can't see. See, hoping a little bit different for me. Now, I'm pretty sure, like I say oftentimes, I tell a lot of people who can explain this thing a lot better than I can to you. But just from my side of it, being as real as I can be, be rich. See, hope helps, man. If you ain't strong enough to have faith, have hope. And then if you pray with some hope and God answers your prayer, then that hope gains a little confidence. And after a while, that confidence becomes faith. Now it ain't just hoping, but I'm believing. I'm believing in something that I cannot see. Faith has been the key to my entire existence, even when I didn't have any. It was faith as I look back on it that has gotten me here. And not just faith, but my faith. See, you will only get to where you're going in your life based on your faith. See, a lot of people get the word faith confused. Like, what's your faith? Uh, And then they start going down this whole list of all these different religions out here. But really, in essence, man, when I talk to people about faith, I'm talking to you about your, your belief. How much do you believe in the unseen? How much do you believe in the things you can't see? How much do you believe in the impossible? How much do you believe? See, because faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. Faith is is the core of all that is happening to me today. It is the faith that I have in my relationship with God that enables me to just oftentimes, if I stay on the right course and believe a certain way and act a certain way, his blessings just pour. They just come. And it comes in a lot of little ways, too, I've started to notice. See, it ain't just, a lot of people think blessings is money. Uh, No, man, that ain't it. It's coverage. It's every time my plane lands safe. It's every time they predict bad weather and I get up in the sky and it don't be no bad weather. You know, this, this is favor. These are blessings that get poured out to me. Somebody call me and offer me something. Not money, but an opportunity. You know, some somebody say, hey, man, I don't know, but I sent this to you. I thought you might be interested in it. Somebody will send me a scripture or somebody will send me something. That's favor. And it always comes at a time when I need it the most. That's favor. That's pouring out blessings. Now, I'm also the recipient of a lot of other blessings, too. You know, I, I've been blessed with health. That's amazing blessing, man. I've been blessed with a spirit of not quitting. I've been blessed with the ability to shoulder huge amounts of responsibility. See, blessings come a lot of ways. But once you tie in to God, once you tie in and you start doing the best you can do and you start asking for him to make you a better person, to help shape and mold you into the kind of man or person that he wants you to be, You'd be amazed what God can do with you, man, if you just invite him in and allow him to be a part of your life. I mean, what you got to lose out there? Come on. If you're sitting in the cell this morning, why why would you not change? 
I watch these shows about men locked up all the time who wait and they get in their 40s and they decide, man, I'm tired of this. I've lived most of my life behind these bars. When I get out this time, man, I'm going to get it right. Why you got to wait till you're 40? I mean, when you're 40, it's cool. Get yourself together whenever it happens. But, man, do you know that you were not created to live behind bars? God didn't make you that way. But if you've gotten yourself into that position, though, see, now you got to do the best you can. But ain't no need to look at it, God being mad at it. We'd have made all of our decisions, got us to where we at today. You have a chance to turn your life around with a relationship with God. What you waiting on? Are you going to just keep doing it like that, huh? Really? Come on, man. Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you not allow God to be a part of your life so you can get to where he wants you to be? God got some big plans for you. If he didn't, you wouldn't keep waking up. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, people, boys, girls, children, men, women, adults, adolescents, uh, idiots, uh, well-intended, geniuses, uh, mental cases, (laughs) everybody. I think that covers the morning show. <laughs> yeah, I think you got everybody you got in everybody in there. Yeah. 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 I don't know who the genius is. But... <laughs> We're all geniuses. <laughs> uh, no, you're not. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Good morning, Shirley. Hey, good morning, Steve. How you doing? Good. Sup, Carl? What's up, Steve? Good morning. Junior. Morning, up. Uh- J. Anthony Brown. Do not address me as J. Anthony Brown. Wait, wait, what? You what? Fat Panther. What, what does he, can you? That black <laughs> ass panther. I'm more like that. Don't be disrespectful. <laughs> Where is he from? Don't, hero. Be, don't be disrespectful. Do not be disrespectful <laughs> to the hero. Oh, I just got his bio. Yeah, from the from the country of Paiwanda. Could you read read my bio, Pai-wanda. please? What's the country? What's the name of it? Paiwanda. Pi Wanda. Where is that in is relation that close to, to Wakanda? Close Wakanda? to Wakanda, uh-huh. but it's Pi Wanda. Oh, Pi Wanda. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could you read? Okay. Oh, okay. If Steve is you, it's okay. Steve, you cool? Read. If I. Oh, please read it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> the Fat Panther. That would be me. Yeah. The Fat Panther's <laughs> real name is Sammy Sumter. At the age of 21, while living in the town of Pi Wanda. Pi Wanda. He defeated three other fat men during fat guys, two, yeah. three fat guys during the town's annual pie eating contest. Yeah. It's an annual thing they have oh. it every year. Every year they have it. <laughs> yeah, I eat the pie. I will eat the pie. Then someone else will eat the pie. They all eat the pie. And uh-huh. so there's no one left eating pie. pie. And you defeated three other men all during of the, them the in pie. a row. One, two, three. <laughs> Out, done. So after eating 99 pies, 99 pies. What? Fat Panther bit into the 100th pie. The magical pie. The 100th pie. Mm. There was something different about this pie. I said that too. It was <laughs> laced with a food <laughs> potion that gave Sammy, also known as the, Fat, the Panther, Fat Panther, yes. special powers of defending all food all injustices. Food injustice. If if someone takes a sandwich, call it Fat Panther. <laughs> you don't have food to eat, call it Fat Panther. Okay, that's a good that's thing. That's what this Fat Panther the, the Fat Panther pies are filled with a special flavor that makes people do the right thing after he hits them in the face with a pie. In the face <laughs> with a pie. <laughs> when there's a food injustice, call his, it Fat Panther. his food senses activate. He confronts the person committing the injustice with a pie in the face. Mm -hmm. No meal is too small. Keeping his pie on the crime. One one slice slice at at a time. time. I love it. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, the Fat Panther. Yeah. It's born on the Steve yeah. Harvey morning show. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> All right, it is time for something funny. As we mentioned earlier, the Fat Panther is the here. The Fat Panther, you're saying it too fast. The Fat Panther. Fat Panther. From the no. country of Fat. 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 And that is what? That's fat ass panther. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's no T-H in panther. Yeah, yeah, it's panther. You're being oh, disrespectful panther. to the panther. 
And Steve, you wanted to interview him, talk to him. Yeah, I wanted more. to ask yeah. you, uh, how old are you, uh, as Panther? Say, you have to say the question, hey, Fat Panther, how old oh, are you? Okay. Address me as what I am. Okay. Hey, hey. Fat Panther. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, how old are you exactly? 455 years old. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, 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 fat yes. Panther? Yes. Hey, Fat Panther, address me as the Fat Panther. Yes. That's what I just did. Yes. Oh, I I did take a little anger in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Who you gonna get on his nerves, Fat Panther? I'm just silly. Already about, about to be some extra adjectives. Have you met Steve? <laughs> are you gonna, I've heard are you about him. Hear? I read a memo you, about him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Would you hit him with a pie? Oh no, no. <laughs> You hit him with the bike, you can't come on the show no more. <laughs> hey, Fat Panther. Yes. In your travels, do you travel to fight crime or is everything local? I will go wherever there's a food injustice. Wherever there's a food injustice. For instance, if your mom gets up in the morning and makes the boy a bologna sandwich mm -hmm. and he goes to school, he's got a bologna sandwich. All the other kids have a great lunch. I'm going to wake her ass up and say, make the boy a good breakfast. Get your ass out the bed. Make some eggs and some grits. You lazy bum. Hey, uh, I think it sounds hey Fat Panther. Yeah. Where were you when Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> ran out of chicken in the UK? Oh, yeah. I was responsible for that. Me? You were? Not alone. Not alone. I have a sidekick. Oh. Oh. George, uh, George Wallace's mama <laughs> helps me a lot oh, in my endeavors. Oh, he didn't pull his mama in there. <laughs> You're wrong. She's my sidekick, uh, the real fat panther. I'm the fat panther. She's the real fat panther. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we call her the really, really fat panther. <laughs> Same person, though. Same person. <laughs> Any more questions, Steve? <sighs> well, one probably, I don't know if this is the last thing, uh, but fat panther. Yes. How much do you weigh? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that is a good question, Steve. <laughs> as old as he is? Yes, <laughs> about, about the age that I am. Yeah. <laughs> you about four hundred fifty-five pounds? About, about on a good day, yes. <laughs> well, you can't run and say nobody. No, I, no, it's not running. I show up. I don't <laughs> run. I was kind of asking what was your mode of travel. <laughs> oh, I don't. No, you got it all wrong, Steve. I don't run. I just show up. You just show up. Oh, you just appear in the car too. <laughs> oh. Damn, I got high blood pressure. <laughs> I, I, I'm sleeping with a CPAP machine. Oh, there's no running. Trust me, Steve. Speaking of food injustice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't take respect from a real skinny man. The, the other panther, the other panther, he has a job to do. The fat panther oh, real is just, just here fighting food injustices. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. Have you heard about there's a peanut butter uh, shortage that's happening in Georgia? Are you aware of that? I'm, anytime there's a food shortage, I talk to my sidekick. The real fat panther, George Wallace's mama, to find out <laughs> where the food is going. If it's nuts, gumquats, grapes, popcorn, chicken, honey buns. She likes honey buns a lot. <laughs> she has a special, a special, how do you say, recipe? Uh, recipe. She takes four honey buns mm -hmm. and a big slab of bologna uh -huh. and some cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you should see her eat that. <laughs> Honey bun and bologna? And cheese. And cheese. <laughs> Together? What is it, a sandwich? Yeah, I guess it is a sandwich. That's <laughs> <laughs> too much. A honey a bun sandwich. Have y'all heard about this new fat pound? For, let me ask you something. Yeah. Have you heard about this new restaurant that I'm excited to want to go to because they've done a spinoff of chicken, waffle, chicken and waffles, and they do, uh, and they do, uh, they do donuts and chicken. 
Mm. Glazed donuts oh. and chicken. Have y'all heard oh. about this place? No, no. I have, I have. Oh, that sounds good, no. though. Yeah, that sounds delicious. No, it's a place that does huge glazed donuts and fried chicken. That sounds just thinking I'll about do that. that. Sounds no, good. That's, oh, Ooh, my cholesterol is going up as we speak. <laughs> Oh, my blood pressure is rising already in the room. Girl, are you healthy enough to carry no. on this? I don't, I don't know. Fat Panther sound like he could die on the next mission. <laughs> <laughs> what is your next mission? mission? The danger of him is every mission could be his <laughs> next <laughs> mission. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's just why I don't run. <laughs> Hopefully, ain't none of these food injustices upstairs. <laughs> I got to go up there. <laughs> if it is on the fifth floor, I'll deal with it when they come downstairs. <laughs> I'm stopping it before he does. <laughs> We're not having you, Fat Panther. All right, I'll be there. I'll be around. <laughs> Much love, Pat. Much. Much, much love. Steve, are you there? No. Well, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I didn't want to be. Uh, yeah. I'm here. Thank you so much uh, for coming, Fat <laughs> no, Really, Steve? There, there's a peanut butter shortage in Georgia? I didn't know that. All right. No, I was just, I'm sorry, Shirley. I was just playing the game. Uh, <laughs> coming up next, it's the nephew and run that prank back. Uh-huh. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Tommy, what's your prank phone call about? The plumber. <laughs> the what? The plumber. <laughs> what's the defiance in your voice? We finna call the damn plumber. Oh. The plumber. Okay. Nah. Hello? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to reach a uh, Mr. Please. Oh, uh, that would be me. Mr. How you doing? You you the person that does the plumbing work, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Now, my wife got some work done for you. You come by the house. Now, do you know... Uh, I know you probably got quite a bit of work. Hmm. No, well, I, I do so many throughout the day, so I, I have it on my receipt here. I can look at it over here. It's about three days ago at the street. Hmm. Maybe look. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can recall. Was a lady there? Yeah. You. Uh, you. It was a toilet was backed up and was overflowing and yeah 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 i can recall that and that I, something was wrong with the the sink in there too in that that had a leak in the back of it yeah it had a leak in the back and i and i done that i fixed that there for you and uh i took that toilet that I had a uh around the bottom of your base the toilet base there i had to take that up and and retape it because that tape had came uh came loose it was kind of old there and i you know went through that and Done all that and, and taped it up and, and sealed it up and and I rebased that seal back there on your in the toilet and and your sink had a little leak back there in the back. I fixed that because you know that was real easy there. So well, no, see that, that is something went wrong with that toilet. Now, did you did you put a another pipe or something? Did you reroute a pipe or anything? No, no. Like I said, all I did I took the base of it off there. And I taped it up to where that that old tape there, and then I I put me some cement, which was with with uh with my pipe there, and I and I sealed it all up, and I checked it out, I let it dry to see if it leaked, and it didn't leak, and I put your base back on, and you know, and then I then I then you had a little leak there in your uh, sink, and that was on the top of the, of the the uh, your nozzle there, and I fixed that well, for you. Mr. I'm gonna tell you, cause I. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you and tell you I'm not happy with what I got. You're with, not happy with it? No. Now, let me tell you what's happening. Mm-hmm. Now, say somebody in the bathroom and they flush that toilet. Right, right. When they flush that toilet, come out the sink in the kitchen. In the, hold on. Now, now, tell me that, tell me that. Say that what you did again. I said when they flush the toilet in the bathroom. Right. Come out the sink in the kitchen. They come out in the kitchen like that. I don't know what how you route something like you didn't you didn't misroute it no, or something. No, I didn't I didn't route anything. All I did was fix the I put the tape on there so I could fix the leak that was you know, your, your uh at the base of your toilet. I didn't reroute anything. I don't I don't I don't understand how can you re, you reroute a pipe I don't that, toilet that, pipe to go into your kitchen and shoot will shoot crap out of your kitchen like that. I don't know what 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 you did when you was up under there and how you rerouted something, but that's what happened. And it got it got it's going from the from that bathroom when you flush that toilet 
it come out in my sink in my kitchen. Now, what's bad about it is this morning I'm in there cooking. Sir, and I, what, and, and, what, 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 what's your name again? My name is They call me Okay. And crap is coming out of your, your plumbing in your in, in my your In my kitchen. Now, this morning I set well, out some red beans and rice to cook. And I put my beans on. Now, now I've been yeah. cooking. I've been cooking. Listen at me. I've been well, cooking no, all. No, I'm, I'm trying to be professional about this because, you know, I guarantee my work. I've been doing this over 20 years. And one thing I do, I, I guarantee my work, and I'm real proud about the things that, you know, I do. But uh, what, what, did you have anybody else over there working on your pipe? Ain't nobody. You, in, your, in your kitchen? You, all I did was your bathroom. You is the your only. Bathroom, the bathroom don't have anything to do. With your kitchen, that floor pipe have anything to do with one or the other. Then explain that coming through my sink in my kitchen. I can't explain the coming from your your sink. I can only explain that's in the toilet in your sink. I have no idea. I'm gonna listen. I'm because this thing got me round up. Listen I, now, what it is? It, well, you I, got me kind of wrapped up here because you know, like I said, I do this here. And I've been doing it for 20 years, and that's the first time I ever heard well, I, of anything like that being happening. I ain't never seen it. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, it's just disgusting to be cooked, to cook red beans all day. And not, now I find out that it's sitting in some dirty water like that. You didn't smell the water when you was in the, in your sink? Because I'm quite sure they had a loud uh, 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 smell to I it. didn't smell nothing. Now, this more, earlier this morning, I washed my hair in there. And I didn't smell. what? I washed my hair in there. That's just what it smell like. A bag of I'm just, I just, I just refuse to believe that the work I did on your toilet in there, taping some stuff up and seaming some stuff up, and on your sink had anything to do with crap being shot out your damn uh, kitchen sink. Well, I tell you what, what I need to do is for you to get your back over here and fix it, cause this here ain't a good job, and I don't recommend nobody using you. Well, first of all, why I'm trying to be professional about it. And you cussed me, and that ain't gonna get nothing done, Mister. One sh come out my pipe. It was no longer professional. Well, now, obviously you had somebody else over there doing something in your sink. I ain't and had nobody. Is, you, do you have a garbage disposal over there? I, look, maybe it's coming out your garbage disposal. It ain't high in the well. It's, it's crap uh, coming out of my garbage. You get your back over here and you fix what you're supposed to fix and fix and, it right. Then I'm not paying another damn dime for it. I'm not coming over to fix a. Hey, I try to be professional about it. I'm listening to what you got to say. I should have hung up on your a long time ago, but I'll get a team of work. And I'm trying to, you know, deal with my customers. When I left the way, I told her to flush the toilet. She flushed the toilet. She ran the faucet in the bathroom. We had no problem. Now, if you don't have somebody else over there that's doing whatever, Lord knows what, I don't, I damn sure don't know. Do you know I, I ate? none of my business. I ate some of them red beans, and that's what bothered me now. I feel sick to my stomach. I'm well, if you got me food and some red beans and whatever the hell you eating over there, it smells like water. You, you, you crazy as hell. I'm going to make your eat something of these red beans if you don't come fix these pipes. You can go to hell. I'm trying to be professional. I think I told you I'm doing my job. I did it the best that I know I could. And when I, got, when I left there, it wasn't nothing leaking. One pipe don't go with the other like I you told you. You get over here and fix these pipes. Pipe. That's what you do. You, you and your wife kiss my because I know well I did an outstanding job over there. You ain't done nothing if I you got... You them red bean and rice, stick them up your... You and your pipes and all that. I don't give a damn. I know what's coming I, up. I ain't fixed no red bean and rice. I ain't done nothing over there in your damn kitchen to have you that upset with me. I got one more thing I want to say to you. Is you listening? I'm listening to you. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Oh, you just you got, got pranked it. by your boy. <laughs> man, you kidding me. Man, y'all y'all crazy, man. Y'all cool with that? Yes, upset that man like that. Huh? I'm just asking, y'all cool with it? Mm -hmm. All right yeah, then, baby, it's the crazy. plumber. Huh. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I catch myself, but I, yeah. I might have went a bit far on that, but you know. <laughs> just want to know the difference between these boys. You want to know who said what? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Jay. Uh, this bit is called "You Got Your Priorities you got Mixed your Up." Priorities mixed up. Sometimes we do things, but we should be doing another thing. Mm -hmm. Meaning, the thing that you might not be doing should be the thing you should do. 
meaning you Why got your priorities go mixed up. For instance, what? Mm. For instance, <laughs> how about we bless the food before we take pictures of the damn food? <laughs> what is that about? Huh? What is the yeah. pictures Can we do about? That? for the gram, baby, for the uh-huh. followers. You know? <laughs> yeah. Bless the food first. <laughs> I think I think you got the projects mixed up. That's yeah. just me. I agree. Let, let, let. So 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 I got a friend named Leonard. Mm-hmm. Just brought him a brand new Lexus. Mm-hmm. He fought it. He fought it. Mm-hmm. But he stay at his mama house. Now is that priority? That's, mixed you got him right mixed up, dog. You <laughs> can't. You gonna park a Lexus in front of your mama house, and you ain't got a place to stay. Car rich, house poor. Car rich, house poor. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, here, here go one. This is what I don't understand. Uh-huh. You just borrowed some money from me, but then you gonna tell me some financial advice right now? <laughs> <laughs> what you, you need to do, dog? What? Mm. Got your priorities. You got, you you got, got your, your priorities, priorities mixed up. Oh, what you got? Yeah, you yeah, who's got their priorities mixed up? I think if you're trying to make a decision on whether you're going to buy some new clothes or some groceries, and you opt to buy the clothes, something's wrong with you. (laughs) You got your priorities mixed up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean no harm. Eat eat, eat your shirt. Eat your shirt. shirt. You got, you got your priorities mixed up. I'm just trying to figure out, because I live in L.A. and I see this a lot. What is the cutoff age of a dude with a beard on a skateboard? That's all I'm asking. Yes, I ain't mad at you, Jack. I ain't mad That's at you. It. I see it all the time. How you look like a shepherd, but you on a skateboard? <laughs> Makes no sense. Priorities, You got Sunday. your priorities mixed up. Mixed up. <laughs> Okay, I got it for you. You got it? You 400 pounds. Uh-huh. And your transportation is a scooter. <laughs> Come on now, man. Either lose some weight or get a car. All right, but it's, it's too much happening right here. It's too, way too much. You too uh, busy. busy. Uh, uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, Tommy. Mm-hmm. This is something I can't understand. You sit here talking to me with all designer clothes on. Mm-hmm. But you got teeth missing. I mean, what <laughs> What? Yeah. Where we at with yeah. this? Come on, Junior. Yeah. Yeah. Where we yeah. at with this? I mean, you, yeah. you, you, you Gucci, you Louis, you everything. But Louis your down. bottom you row looks down. like a downhill don't, slot. Don't you don't see look. that's gone? Yeah. Your priority is mixed up. <laughs> jack-o'-lantern about the mouth. Uh, you look What's like a jack-o'-lantern about the mouth. Oh, uh, Junior, you, uh, Junior, when they missing that side tooth. And oh, like my it, God. That side one. <laughs> you no. see that, man. Yeah. Yeah, where, where I got at? one. You got one, T? <laughs> you at the bus stop. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I pull up in a raggedy car. <laughs> you laughing at my car. <laughs> right. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. Yeah. Wait a minute. Excuse hey, me? Hey, this is the laugh. <laughs> uh, I got one. I got one. You, you got, got your priorities mixed up. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you're not right. You're just a little off off kilter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got on a Black Lives Matter T-shirt. That's all you wear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But all your friends is white. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Priority. Priority. Get them in <laughs> order. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what right here. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You sitting in the living room playing with your kid. Uh-huh. Your kid tell you to shut up, and you do it. <laughs> Whoa. What? Whoa. You, know, you, you, you got up. your priorities mixed yeah. up. Way mixed up. Who the parent in him? Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> priorities. I got one. Oh, man. You get arrested, mm-hmm. and your mug shot, you got on a Black Lives Matter T-shirt. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> but you arrested for a drive-by. Oh, <laughs> oh you went deep with it. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Whoa. That cut. <laughs> Get your priorities together. Yeah. Uh, Get your priorities together. Uh, order. It's to the ladies. Mm. You got a designer bag. Mm-hmm. You paid maybe seven, eight hundred dollars. Okay. But you ain't got lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <I> got you. <laughs> No, that, ain't, that ain't a good one, Jay. <laughs> Boo. Get out of here.
out of here. I got one for you. <laughs> <laughs> you the president of the United States. Uh-huh. And you done took most of our money and went and played golf with it. And we got plenty of stuff around here that need to be taken care of. You got your priorities. You got them really mixed up. You got your priorities mixed up. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you we do. We get deep with it. We okay. getting deep with it. This, I got this one is, for la- Go ahead, Julie. I was saying, this is just something that just personal, just to my my family and my house. Uh-huh. Mm. You, you, you got a 39 in reading. Uh-huh. You ain't past reading uh-huh. in about six report cards. Okay. Uh-huh. But you know all the words to Cardi B, Bodak Yellow. Now, what, are, what are we really doing here? Come on. I make money moves. Yeah, I make money, I make money moves. moves. I but you can't read these leave. words. But read, read Little Red Riding Hood for me. You got your priorities mixed you up. Right, way you mixed up. All right, come on, close Last it out, Steve. Uh-huh. uh-huh. All right, this is a ripper right here, so get ready to go. Might not Uh-oh. be able to use this one. Uh-oh. You in the mall uh-huh. with a FEMA chick, <laughs> and you done bought some red bottles. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Now, Steve, Jay is here. Please introduce him to Murder Another Ladies, game. gentlemen, murder the hits. I want to thank you for allowing me to introduce the Fat Panther on this show. Yeah. Oh. But what the Fat Panther did not have was theme music. Right. Cannot be a superhero without theme music. Right. This is the Fat Panther's theme song. Check it out. Back in the 70s. <laughs> the jam, boy. Uh-huh. just playing. Found a message for you. That Panther. Ooh. I love it. That mm-hmm. Panther. That's a superhero theme song. Yeah, you oh, got Lord. That's boy. what he do, because that's what he do. I can see a tear coming down your <laughs> Man, this boy. <laughs> this boy touched me, man. How did you meet the Fat Panther? How did this all come about? Well, I was in Pawanda. I met the Fat Panther. He said, are you, are you looking for someone to do some fight, fat fight crime? And I said, yes. Uh-huh. And he said, I'm the guy. I'm the Fat Panther. And the Fat Panther was born just like that. Coming up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 34 after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, listen, uh, millennials are going broke. I think we all have millennials. I got one that's yeah. broke. I got one that's damn so broke. Yeah. You know, I don't have one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have a gen- Yeah, you have a, one of those, Carla. We, we all have mi- millennials here. Uh, they say they're going broke because of social media, though. 
Uh, according to research by Allianz Life, 57% of millennials, that's compared to 28% of Gen Xers and 7% of baby boomers, say they've spent money they didn't have because of something they saw on social media. They buy online, they do. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. with our online. money, right? And not keeping aware of the, how much money they got, right? Facebook got some good stuff out there. They do, man. They be running and some and good stuff out there. But we have jobs. We can buy it. Our kids. Uh, all right, uh, seems lots of millennials feel pressure to keep up appearances, with nearly 50% saying they are influenced by their friends, posts of lavish vacations, and lifestyles. Now, according to the survey, social media has become the millennials' financial Achilles heel. All right? Uh, okay. Mm. I yeah. believe it. You agree? Mm -hmm. We did not have that problem. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it was on a Polaroid if yeah. you saw no, it. Because when you were cutting grass and collecting bottles and all that stuff to get money, it was a whole different story. You yeah. saved Damn. your money. It was man. a hustle. But yeah. It was a hustle, right? right. Uh, or you got allowances. I cut uh, a lot yeah. of y'all. I think it's more reactionary spending available to young people now. Compulsive spending, I mean. You know, I think they could just press a button and it's done. Yeah. That's it. You know, it, was, it. it wasn't no, we had to get up, go to the Work store, hard for it. find it all. Like, it's, you can just do compulsive buying. Mm -hmm. And you can press a button and press a button. And I got that. Oh, I got that. And I got that. And next thing you know, no, you don't have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big cause of it right there. The accessibility of everything, and it's so easy to do. Right. Well, we didn't give them a credit card to do it. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. yeah. Because the yeah. parents, you guys live a better lifestyle than how our parents did. Yeah. So you're able to give your well, kids more. Provide. Yeah, provide well, you know, I mean, you got to give them a debit card because that's everything set up on that. I know. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want them mm -hmm. carrying the cash. Oh, no. no. So you give them a debit card. But you've got to teach them, and that's the struggle. Uh, my boys are, are, are better at it. Well, mm -hmm. Morgan's really good with money, but Morgan and her husband are, are very, very self-sufficient. Carly and her husband are very self-sufficient. Brandy's out. She's self-sufficient. My oldest son, I don't have to concern myself with him. Lori and Winton, they lost their damn mind. Well, those are the two millennials. that's always had it good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, them two right That's there, they ain't, had no, they ain't had no dog. Now, are you still in the giving situation of their lives? Meaning if they don't have it, you I just... am. Yeah, 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 my daughters, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if they come to me with a situation. But I'm there's a, always a situation. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, I'm going to help them keep before I have, let them have to go to some man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll help them before they have to go to some man because then I know that come with some stipulation. Yeah. So, yeah. One of my daughters just texted me today. You know, they make me sick, though, the way they text. Hey, Dad. You know what? <laughs> but Put something with it. Can I get yes, a hello? Can, that, can I get a how are you <laughs> today? Hello. Yeah. There's really not a lot behind the big and that they do because it's so short. It's never, it's not but I don't. But don't text me, hey, Dad, yeah. question mark. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. I got stuff to do. Yeah. And, but they text like they talk. Hey, Dad. And then they wait on you to go, hey, girl. And then they go, what you doing? And then uh, it took me forever to find out what W-Y-D was. Oh, yeah. So I didn't know what the hell that was. So I said, walking down. <laughs> I love it. Now. I love I'm our millennials. I love them. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back and forth like that. And I don't have that kind of time. So I ignore the hey, dad text. Yeah. What do you want? Mm -hmm. You know what Because I don't have time to take back, go, hey, you. Mm -hmm. How you doing today? How you doing? W-Y-D. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Figure out what y'all talking about. All these letters, man. <laughs> no, you're not, you're sure. I wish they had what we had, just a J.C. No. Penny cat. Yeah. Man, if I want something from <laughs> you know my parents, saying? you better get busy. My daughter said, what could I do to get $1,500? I said, you could call somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, listen, coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, we'll have uh, the, stra the strawberry letter for today. But up next, yeah. Nephew Tommy's right okay. here, Steve. Okay. No, what time? What time? No, no, what? before the prank, before the prank, yeah, before, before the we prank. left the last break, Shirley, you said, speaking of Tommy, was you saying... When he said ugly, you said speaking I said, of time. Speaking I said, why don't your strange looking ass take us to break? <laughs> Shirley said, speaking of Tommy. 
Timothy. Now, when you're saying speaking of Tommy, <laughs> are you? But, but let me, no, let's just speaking cut the of Tommy, he's up next with the prank phone call. It's called okay. promotion, Am Tommy. Am I ugly to you? Yes. Absolutely. 100%. I'm talking to Shirt. No, oh. Tommy. No, you're not ugly to But me. she didn't say he didn't look strange, though. But, but, but Shirley, but ain't he strange looking, though? No, he's not. Tommy's. No, he's not. He's you not are. what? He's not strange looking. Tommy, Tommy looks don't look normal. strange. No, he's a normal looking, handsome young man. What do you mean, no? Tommy ain't handsome. Quit telling this boy that. <laughs> oh, God. We don't have handsome men in our family. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy handsome. ass ain't handsome. Tommy thinks he is, <laughs> no, okay? No, I don't want to shatter that myth. Tommy for him. think he oh. tall. <laughs> He I, I don't think think Tommy think he's fat. I, don't think I I'm draw tall. the line I'm at tall. <laughs> Tommy think he's fat. <laughs> but he got his ass roasted. <laughs> yeah. And now he think he's cute. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Mm. And if he accept it, he can have fun with it. But see, I keep telling you. You're just trying not to hurt his feelings, no. right, Shirley? Of course not. No. no. Yeah. No, no, that's what I'm that. Hurt him. <laughs> Hey, before I play, the prank, I'm finna play. Before the prank. you, I'm, before I'm you sh- play the strange, <laughs> <laughs> my my pranks are not strange. <laughs> Listen, the name of the title of this is "You Got to Bring Those TVs Back." Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm trying to reach a uh, Sharon, please. Who's calling? Uh, my name is Paul. Paul. I'm head of security here. At How are you? This is. Yeah, what? you um, you actually came out and you. I think you were here on uh, Friday, uh, and you came out and purchased yeah. four flat-screen televisions, 40, 42 inches. Am I correct? Yeah. But, but what you calling me for? What I was giving you a call for, Sharon, is that we got a bit of a problem. Now, when you purchase these actual flat-screen televisions on, on Black Friday, so to speak, it seems that we've got them... Um, well, your your purchase went through successfully. I will admit that, but there should have been a red flag that have gone up because we're going back over transactions of the past two three days here, and we're realizing that your purchase should not have been successful. It should have been void. Your credit card is actually not valid at all. No, now my credit card, cause uh, we got paid on Wednesday, so my money was there. Well, uh, actually, ma'am, it, it, uh, what I'm what I'm trying to explain to you is that. It is coming up invalid now, and we're having a problem with it. So I wanted to reach out to you and give you a call and see if we could probably, you know, uh, well, it was take... it was valid when I was at their register because it went through. I got a receipt and everything. I didn't purchase that extended warranty on all four of them, so it was valid on on Friday. I don't know what's wrong with it today, but it was good then. And I understand that. I understand that that you know, just being at the register and you purchasing it and no problems at all happening. That's pretty much the thought process that you're going to have. What I'm letting you know is on the on the back part of it. When you came into the store, uh, what we're getting the day uh, the day after is that it was pretty much invalid. It wasn't good at all. Your credit card was not good at all. But so, you need to call your bank then, because uh, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I had the money in there the day I went and bought them, and that's it for me. So I don't know who you need to call, but don't call me, because you know that ain't really my problem. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna raise this to be a major problem. We're gonna try to rectify it and get it taken okay. care of. Yeah, do what you need to do. Okay, listen. Now, uh, here's what we're gonna do. You know, I'm, I'm, I want us to try to work this out as smoothly as we can. What I'm gonna have to ask you to do? Can I get you to come back up to the store and bring all four televisions with you? Oh no! Oh mm mm. No, you sure can't. Baby, look, I bought them four TVs. I have wrapped one of them up that's under the tree for my husband. My mama, Earlene, she already got the uh, other TV. We hung that up for her on Saturday when we was watching movies. So it didn't really ain't no way we're going to bring the four TVs back. I think you should go back to whoever process your credit card and tell them that they, that I don't know what you're going to tell them, but you need to go back to them. I ain't got time to be running back and forth to that store. Well, I, don't want, I don't want us to create a problem here. I don't want to do that. You need to lower your voice. Okay, but now, no. Look, I, you listen. need to go back to whoever do your credit cards because it went through when I was at the store, correct? I don't want to. Did it go I, through already, yes or no? I told you that it went through. I explained yeah, that then, you. you. ain't got no business on my damn phone. And don't call me with this bull no more. Hold on, on just a me? minute. What I don't want to have to do, I don't want to have to come out to your home and compensate. I have to this- what? 
know what you would come after my ass, baby. We will beat you into bad health. You better not bring your over here. Look, you need to call whoever do your credit cards. Get your straight with them because your business with me is done. I got a receipt and I got an extended warrant. I will have my lawyer tear your up. You bring your over here, Nate. That's I, listen, lady, I don't want to go back and forth with you on this and that. You ain't going back and forth. This is over with. I got the TV. I got a receipt. We is done. I don't know what's wrong with your machine. This is my not, car went through. He's, he's, I'm trying to get her to understand that I'm, we need you her to You ain't understand what I'm saying. Ma'am, if you, can hang, on, if you can hang on one second and let me speak with my boss, please. Put your outrageous. boss on the phone. I tell your boss, y'all don't run me, baby. I got a receipt for four TVs, and I'm going to keep all four TVs. Listen, you know, this is pretty much considered a theft process. Oh, yes? what? A theft Let's process. You this came ain't no theft. This ain't in no theft. Listen here, listen Pimpin. To listen to me, Pimpin. I got a receipt for four TVs. I walked out the store with my receipt. I got my extended warranty. So this ain't no theft. What this is is a miscommunication between your bank. So you need to get your straight because I got a prepaid debit card, baby. I don't owe nobody on them TVs. You need to call your bank and get the up off my phone with this you stole some TVs from our store and damn it, you're gonna bring them back. Are you gonna get your you can come get them? You damn right, I got four TVs. Your dumb machine got them to me and I'm gonna keep them. We gonna watch the game on your TV. Bring your over here if you want to. We will mop the floor with your. Don't you call me by no TVs no more. So you the one ain't gonna have no job for the. Holiday with your dumb Don't call me with you your You're going to get busted no for using bad credit cards at department stores, and I'll get your called in. Do you understand me? So that's your problem. You put the four TVs back then. So Uncle Tom threatening the white man for his TV. You better get you a business or some a detail shop or start a rap label. You better get the on. Work for them white folks. Don't confront me about that TV. You better get the off that Get off my phone anyway. Listen, you listen to me. I got one more thing I need to say to you. I ain't there with your scary Are you listening to me? What the f do you want? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey morning. I don't give a f about nobody's nephew. N come over here about them damn TV. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey morning show. You just <laughs> got pranked by your girlfriend. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is who now? <laughs> This is nephew Tommy, baby, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by, by your your girlfriend. <laughs> oh, Tommy, you almost got your feet. I know that did set me up. I was going to get that teeth. She ain't getting now. <laughs> this is hard. You cannot play with people like this. <laughs> Oh, man. I got one more thing to ask you, baby. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Oh, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> that is right there. Stupid is all get out. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, right now, guys, it is time for today's Strawberry Letter. Don't forget, if you need advice on relationships, on dating, on work, on parenting, on sex, on more... Uh, submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com. I uh, had a parenting question for y'all. I asked oh, y'all yeah. earlier, and y'all are not giving me a chance to ask no, y'all this. We would like to talk to you about it, maybe about 41 yeah. after the hour. Can what? we do it then? Yeah, let's yeah. let's, let's Yeah, we got to get to the letter. Yeah. It's his show. But I'm, well, go ahead. Run your That's right, run, Tommy. Run your show. Don't let them take over. Oh, you can't even man. say your W. I'm always trying to be in charge of something. What'd you say, sir? Uh oh, what? He can't even say his W's and <laughs> he's gonna try and defend someone. Oh no, you ain't letting the wing stop come <laughs> between this. Or the water burger. <laughs> it's what a burger. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> They have delicious fries. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, click submit strawberry letter. And thank you guys because we have been getting a lot of letters in. We need more, though. Guess I'll just ask tomorrow. I told you when. <laughs> Stop being like that. You can't ask nothing on his show. That don't hey. make no sense to me. You just you be quiet, on? okay? How about that? Whatever. <laughs> Introduce the letter. Introduce Buckle the letter. up and hold on tight. Here it is. Strawberry letter. They only let me say that because there ain't no damn W's. 
Wow, thank you, Tommy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Subject, he chose his wife over me. Dear Stephen Shirley, I need your advice because I really want to kick my dad's wife's behind. I am a 42-year-old single mother of two kids. My children's dads don't help me financially, so my father has helped me raise my kids for the past 15 years. Well, I recently lost my job and everything went downhill. I wasn't able to pay my rent, so I had to move out of my apartment at the beginning of this month. I called my dad to ask if we could move back home, and my dad had the nerve to tell me that I had to discuss it with his wife, my stepmother. He put her on the phone and she screamed. <laughs> What's she say? H E double L N A. Hell N A. Yes. And uh, said this would be the ninth time that I've moved back in with them. She said it's not their problem that I can't keep a job and that both of my kids' dads are losers. She said she will no longer allow me to ruin my daddy's credit. <laughs> then she told me to get off my fat blank. No, stop, Shirley. You're doing Yo, it just fat good. ass. Fat yes. ass. Read the and paper. Start, and start taking care of myself. Uh, be <laughs> before she could finish... I hung up on her. Yes, I have made plenty of mistakes, but I don't need her throwing them in my face. So now my children and I are living with my girlfriend, but we can't stay there much longer. My dad will not speak to me until I apologize to his wife. I told him that was never going to happen. Why should I apologize to this woman? She hurt my feelings, so she should apologize to me and let me move in until I get back on my feet. I don't feel like I'm wrong. This was my dad's way. This was this was my dad way before he was her husband. Stephen Shirley, what do you think? Uh -oh. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. How wrong are you? You are just so wrong right here. Uh, and the fact that you don't know this makes this letter even more ridiculous, okay? Your father has every right to do what he's doing, confer with his wife. He has to discuss this with his wife, okay? It's her house, too. Uh, your, your dad doesn't owe you anything, okay? Uh, he doesn't have to let you and your kids move in with them. I mean, how much more is he supposed to do for you at 42? He's been helping you for the last 15 years. That help has turned into enabling. Yes, your dad was your enabler, and he is tired of it now. And wifey is not having it at all, okay? And, and how old are these boys now? You, they've hey, been doing 15. this for 15 years? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. It's time for you to take your baby's daddies to court and uh, get some child support so you can get the financial help you need to, uh, you know, live your life the way you need to live your life. And uh. yes, of course, apologize to your stepmom and for your dad. You're trying to make them feel guilty for not letting you get back in. They have every right to do what they did. Every right. Come on now. Steve? Yeah, Steve. <laughs> Your turn. Come on, boy. Steve. Yeah, these is the type of letters where I excel. <laughs> yes. My gift comes out in letters like this. <laughs> Let me take you down to it. Because you really want to kick your daddy's wife behind. I'm 42. Let's just start the damn the single mother part. <laughs> you, far, <laughs> you 42. <laughs> what? Heffa, you ain't 24. You done flipped it. You 42. You got two kids. Nothing's wrong here. 42, two kids. Ain't bad. Nothing wrong with that. You ready? Ready. My children's dads don't help me financially. So they not sending no child support. Right. So my father has helped me raise my kids 15 years. Oh, you scared me, yeah, man. Yeah, you really did. No, don't worry about that. Okay. I do this. <laughs> Damn, man, I thought, I thought you were doing a Tommy with the W's. Oh, 15 years. You yeah. don't need an extra breath for that? <laughs> Somebody been helping you with these damn kids, and ain't they damn? It's your damn hug, your boyfriend. Right. 15 years. Well, I recently lost my job and everything went downhill. I wasn't able to pay my rent, so I had to move out of my apartment at the beginning of this month. I called my daddy and asked him if we could move back home, and my daddy had the nerve to tell me I had discussed this with his wife. That's because it's her house. Right. And the other reason is because your ass is 42. <laughs> you ain't 15 get put out. You 42. My stepmother 
He put her on the phone and she screamed, Hell no! Uh, I love it. <laughs> I love her. I love that. Mama. And let me tell you why she said hell She's no. Because this will be the ninth time. <laughs> One more time. One more time. This will be the ninth time. Yeah. Nine damn times. So Your 42 year old behind <laughs> that came crawling back to the house. You ain't crawling up in here no more. You grown boy. When we come back, I'm going to tell you why you really can't come back. Uh-oh. It ain't just the nine times. Oh, that's big. Uh-huh. But I got more than that. Why <laughs> yo behind can't come back up in here nine damn times. <laughs> Who do that? I don't know. Who you lose their place to stay nine times? <laughs> you just ain't paying no damn rent. He's mad at his, at his wife, though. That's, if the kids ain't a 15. Right. But that's see, it, damn near every year you get put out. <laughs> you kids. They can get that mama again. You buying <laughs> iPhones and Jordans. Your ass ain't paying the rent. Right. <laughs> All right, we're going to have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 after the hour. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's get to part two of your response to today's strawberry letter. He chose his wife over me. This 42-year-old mm. woman who is single because he can't get nobody to marry her because she pe- keep picking losers that don't pay no child support and help her financially with these two boys. I feel sorry for that, but that ain't the problem. You called your daddy because you lost your job. And why you keep losing jobs? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh-huh. just, you keep losing jobs. Then you call your daddy. Now, he didn't help you in the past, but this time he told you he had to discuss it with his wife. Now, you want to kill her. What you want to kick my wife's daddy behind. My, he put my stepmother on the phone and she screamed, Hell no, you ain't coming in here. <laughs> I love her. Hell I no. We you got to bring it. She said it would be the ninth time, and she did not lie. She's a business. I love her. Cause you didn't dispute it. This the ninth <laughs> damn time that I moved back in with them. She been there through eight move in. Mm, mm, mm. She said it's not their problem that I can't keep a job and that both my kids' dads are losers. You slept with them bums. Now nah, they ain't helping out with the kids. Okay, <laughs> keep, come on, read that this next is, line. She's, this'll be the ninth time. She says she will no longer allow me to ruin my daddy's credit. Here is what Come on. you really mad about. Come on. Come on. <laughs> she then told me to get off my fat ass <laughs> and yes. start taking care of myself. Yes. That's what prompted this That's letter, it. right? That's it. She done called your fat ass out. <laughs> See, that wasn't that, that, she wasn't going to write this letter until she told her, get off your fat ass uh-huh. <laughs> and take care of yourself. Hello. Now we have the letter. Mm-hmm. Now, before she could finish, I hung up on her. <laughs> Cause the fat ass wiped you out. You don't want to I hear know what it was. The, uh, no, uh, this is how the conversation. Get off your fat ass and take care of yourself. Uh, uh. Hey, um, huh? what is daddy and stepmama over there doing by themselves anyway? What are they doing? They live it. Yeah. <laughs> they and, and 42. Loving. They they probably set 60, 70, just enjoying their life. And loving mm-hmm. their life. Right. They don't living want them damn kids life. in there. Her fat ass in there eating groceries. <laughs> They was already last time she was here. That what reason she left? They pad like the refrigerator. <laughs> they put combinations on all the cabinets. <laughs> and you know those boys. Are Be big. sure she could finish. I hung mm, up on her. Everything. Yes, I have made. Now here we go. Here come the confession. Now mm-hmm. I hung up on her. Yeah. Yes, I have made plenty of mistakes, mm-hmm. but I don't need her throwing them in my face. She ain't throwing them in the face. You keep throwing them in their face. You keep dragging them damn kids <laughs> right, back over there right. eight yeah. times prior. Mm-hmm. It ain't that they throwing it in your face. You keep bringing it to their face. So now my children and I are living with my girlfriend, but we can't stay there much longer. You know why? Because your girlfriend know you got a fat ass. Mm. And you're over there eating groceries up over there too. And them two boys. (laughs) My dad would not speak to me until I apologized to his wife. Cause see, you ain't just hang up. 
See, see what, what she what called happened? you, fat ass. Take care of yourself. Oh, oh, oh! You went out the house like you had the waffle. Uh-huh. Oh, I knew you was gonna come back around. Oh, you threw something back up in that house. Then now you got to regret. I'm fat. Oh, I, I'm fat. I ain't the only one fat. Me and you wear the same size. Cause when I live there, I wore your clothes. That's why you can't come back. And that's why you got to apologize. I told him I was that was never going to happen. Now, you're not going to apologize to him? Well, you ain't getting in this woman's no. house. No. Are you stupid? Yeah. Why should I apologize to this woman? She hurt my feelings. You been eating her groceries? Staying at her house? Messing up your daddy credit? <laughs> she don't owe you nothing? No. Nah, she hurt my feelings. So she should apologize to me and let me move in until I get back on my feet. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, everybody always got to do something for you. Mm-hmm. She got to apologize to me and let me move in until I get back on my feet. It's hard to get on your feet with ass your size. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> I've seen big people fall before. It take a while. <laughs> yeah. They got to roll over, get on both knees. They need a hand up. If ain't no hand on nowhere, they just stay there. Stop that. No, I'm telling you, that's what this is. I don't feel like I'm wrong. Well, Shirley told you all wrong. This was my dad way before he was her husband. Yeah, your dad. But when he get a wife, he has to leave all others and cleave unto her. That's your ass is included in the leave. <laughs> her what? <laughs> your ass is included in the leave. And you could come over people's house and stay long if you leave some of that ass. <laughs> yeah. They got to lose apple. But your brain's that wide ass with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You too long. <laughs> and you steady replenishing ass. See, if you would get in the weight loss business, somebody wouldn't mind letting you stay there. But you in the ass replenishing business. You over there just growing ass. He's we sitting up here watching this get wide as we go. Yeah. Your sons is sitting on it while you're walking around Walmart. <laughs> you got one son on each cheek. But Steve, she you ain't got to get a grocery <laughs> car. She, she your really, boys are riding your ass around the what she, she really doesn't get it. She says this was my dad way before he was her husband. Come on. Yeah, that's right. But so damn what? He's yeah. still your daddy, and he said you can't come over there. He's oh, not, think- like Shirley said, he's not just your daddy. He's been your enabler. You've been over these people's house eight times. Yeah, you took wrong. So what you do is, you know you ain't got to do right as long as you don't want to because you can just go over your daddy's house. Exactly. Well, they didn't put a stop to this. So now I ain't got to go to work. I don't feel like it today. You okay. fired. No, I'm going to my daddy's house. Exactly. Yeah. You ought to be taking care of dad, actually. Mm-hmm. You're old enough. You're 42. You're lazy. And your ass looks like a car seat. <laughs> All right, Steve, we got to go. Uh, email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at my girl Shirley. And please join me this Thursday at 1.30 p.m. for the Strawberry Letter Live After Show on Facebook. Okay? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, it's time for something funny. And, uh, Jay, this is about stuff you say to your neighbors under your breath. Please explain. This has to do with we see our neighbors all the time. We're not that fond of them mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. So we speak, but under our breath, we're saying little things, little little insulting things like, hey, how you doing? You need to clean up that nasty ass yard. Keep it 100, Jack. Keeping it, keeping it 100. You got one cheek. Jack, Jay. I just want this. <laughs> Earl, how you doing? How you doing? Earl, my man. You need some curtains, man. You're trying you to go see your her. naked ass oh. every night. We see it too much. How you doing, Franklins? Good to see you. Hope that boy stay home this time. Uh-uh. 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 He just got out. Yeah. He just got out. He takes vacations, Junior. Uh-huh. Hey, good to see ya. Uh-huh. This is the fifth time. Dang. Come on, nephew. Stuff we Perkins. say to our neighbors. Perkins, how are you? Good, good. We should do something with that damn boat you've been having. Back. <laughs> <laughs> you got deep restrictions. Huh? <laughs> how you doing, Miss Kennedy? Hey, how you doing? I can smell that weed way over here. Across the street, I smell it. Dale, 
Dale Kim, how you guys doing today? With two stupid ass kids. Our neighbors under, under our, our breath. breath. It's got to be seen. It's got to be seen. <laughs> Come on, Junior. Hey, hey, Smiths, good to see you. <laughs> All right, now. I wouldn't be pushing my mama that long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, she got to do something. Three people. <laughs> hey, Bob. How are you? Good, good. At least you can stop your fat ass wife from swimming naked all the time. <laughs> Scan the hell out of my dog. <laughs> Mor- morning, Mr. Anderson. How you doing? Yeah. How you got four claws on block and don't none of them work? <laughs> four <laughs> cars? <laughs> yeah, that that yard is a mess. <laughs> stuff, stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Come on, Steve. Will us. What's going on, boy? I see you. Have a good one today. So glad he over there, because that breath for him. <laughs> <laughs> he, that breath. he cut my grass last week. He, he, he killed my flowers. He spoke to me and cut my grass last week for this breath. Wow. That's bad. That's a dragon right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Johnson's. It's good to see y'all. All right, now, man. No, no, we good. We good. I'll tell you right now, I know a baby when he eat paper. I know. I know that baby eat paper. And you got to tell me no more. I know that baby eats paper. Baby ain't oh. smart at all. No, you ain't got to bring him over. No, we good. <laughs> Stuff oh, we say to make this birthday party. Baby. <laughs> Stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Tommy, go. Leonard. Hey. Nice day today. Good, good. Wasn't good last night, damn police. Like, hey, what? I know you said it, though. I know you said it. <laughs> you, you called him. You called him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Ethel, Herman, how y'all doing? <laughs> so good. Ethel and Herman, Ethel my friend, Herman. my friend. <laughs> Time for y'all put y'all mama in the hole. <laughs> Black people don't do that. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mitchell, what's going on? Yeah, I'm good. You don't see that dog doing your yard? You just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just don't right leave, it. Gonna leave it there. You need a pooper scooper. <laughs> Stuff we say to our neighbors <laughs> under our breath. Junior. Hey, what's up, Curtis? <laughs> hey, Keisha, what's going on? <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> All right, now. Ain't no way in the world no better than that damn loud. <laughs> he ain't killing that. <laughs> <laughs> way yelling. too much noise. You been here? <laughs> I don't even know how they touched both their stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. No, I'm good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, nephew. Stuff we say to our neighbors he under our breath. Conley, Conley, yard's looking good. Looking real good. You come over this line, though. You come over this line. One more time with that damn llama. I'm telling you now. You know what the damn line is. I know you know what the line is. You know my side. You know your damn side. Keep on doing it. Line, well, that property line means something. Yeah, it, that, uh-huh. it really do, man. It's it invisible, really but do. it means something. Uh-huh. You know where that line is, uh-huh. right? Man, that's my line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we have time for two more. Jay and then Steve close it out. Uh, stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Let's go. Come yeah. on, hey! Hey! What's going on? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Ooh, she whooped your ass last night. Didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> they got into a fight. <laughs> she, what? she told it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Steve. Close it out. Stuff we say to Take our neighbors. Home, dog. Read out, right. Sydney. Hey, <laughs> could invited me over to the little stank ass party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Damn, 
there, barbecue and everything. That's the well, barbecue and everything. I know, I know you ran out of room over there, but the man patio you even built. A lot of game over. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Thank you. That was good. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Good evening, everybody. This is the Reverend Abdul for the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And I'd like to say... Merry Christmas. Wait, what? It's what? Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. <laughs> What'd you say, Rabbi? No, it is. Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, Steve, Jay is here with things that have a cutoff age. Jay, explain this. Well, 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 Steve actually has it. And these things, are, uh, Shirley and everybody, there's a cutoff age to everything. Mm-hmm. To everything yeah. you do. Some yeah. people some people just ignore it and just keep doing it. Yeah. Right. But run it down, Steve. Like... Come on. This should have a cutoff point. <laughs> the nay nay. The nay. If you over forty, <laughs> we really don't need to look out there and see you doing the nay nay or the whip. <laughs> the whip or the nay nay. Yeah. And you forty. Yeah. Uh huh. Really, thirty-five. The back, thirty-three. We gonna yeah. let you have it to thirty-three. Yeah, thirty-three. You asked, stop doing the whip and the nay nay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what you can't do if you over 35. Uh-huh. You cannot go see the Migos perform. Man, uh-huh. no, you can't. Well, no, you can't. Them. No, no, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can listen to them. You, you can, to them. but you gotta take your kids. Yeah, you gotta take somebody's <laughs> children be. with yeah. you, right? Mississippi okay. Monica just went. <laughs> just just went way about. too old. <laughs> way too old. People sitting next to her going, "Who mom?" <laughs> <laughs> sitting there watching the Migos over Reed play. <laughs> Here's something that has a cutoff age. We don't have a cutoff age, but just listen to this. Uh-huh. You cannot mm-hmm. wear crop tops if you have a muffin top, <laughs> man or woman. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good you one. You know what I mean? Wear them shirts yeah. that's cut off too short, like yeah. you Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're yeah, not. Yeah. Well, you're not. That's a good one. Uh, I like it. Mm. If there's a little bit of muffin yeah. on the side, yeah. You can't do it. You nah. can't do yeah. it. Yeah. I don't mind a little muffin uh, on a woman. Uh, but on a man. Yeah, man. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Dude. Yeah. What Dude. <laughs> Bruh. If you're over 25, Bruh. you got to stop using the word lit. <laughs> what? If you're really? over 25, yeah, Shirley. You got to stop using the word lit. This show is I lit. say it all Every the time. Day. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> if you're oh, over 55, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and you're still using the word copacetic. <laughs> Everything copacetic. Yeah. Oh, that's copacetic, man. Oh, man, that's copacetic. You, you, you need to come on out. Come on. Okay. Come on. Uh-huh. Come on. If you four years old mm-hmm. and you're in a stroller with your legs crossed mm-hmm. yeah. and you yeah. can pull yourself along in the stroller, mm-hmm. your ass needs to be walking. Oh, my God. You got idea. something for the babies? <laughs> Babies, man, you don't care what it is. It's cut off, man. Here's one. Mm. If you're over 80 with a walker, uh-huh. and it's got a cup holder, fanny pack, a place to hold a newspaper, <laughs> tennis balls for a grip, damn it, you mm. got to take something off. <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's too much. <laughs> Cup holder and a fanny pack. If you over 40 Uh and people are still considering you ratchet, Mm. Mm. Uh Uh you're not ratchet. You're actually stupid. (laughs) Mm. A man over 40 with two chains. Okay. And his name is not Two Chains. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm need to stop. Done that. I'm actually done. On the outside, so yeah. Sure. Outside, on the outside. outside. If you stop over the 50 and still wearing any form of nugget jewelry. Uh, <laughs> not the nuggets. What about the set? Can you wear nugget set, Steve? <laughs> Wait. Here's one. Uh-huh. Monica, Shirley. Uh-huh. 
If you're over 45, uh-huh. each fingernail can't be a different color. <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing it. They've been doing Nail it. polish. Pick yep. one. Whatever. You all don't know. <laughs> yeah, we might not know, but we know that. <laughs> but let me tell you this, though. Uh, Don, who's in charge of all of our social media, our digital programming and all of that, when you mm-hmm. mentioned nuggets, she looked over like all she could think what of was that? like chicken McNuggets. She oh, didn't no. know oh, no. what oh, no. you were talking about. Nugget rings, <laughs> nugget Gold nugget. Nugget. Yeah, she nugget watch. She was like nuggets. Yeah, nuggets <laughs> are still out there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> at McDonald's, she thought you were talking about at McDonald's. Oh yeah. no, nugget rings, <laughs> the nugget set. <laughs> Let me see which one was my favorite. It was between the Migos party and Muffin Top. I think. <laughs> That crop. Yeah. <laughs> I like four years old still in the stroller. Yeah. I like your leg. Yeah, oh, you leg. got your leg crossed. Somebody yeah. don't get to walk. You don't get to walk. <laughs> so, Steve, I got a question. So, I can't say lit. What's the cutoff age? The cutoff lit? age is, uh, what, 35? Over 35? You know what you can't say, Jay? What? <laughs> Trump. Good. Oh, you can't say Trump. <laughs> Remember Trump? Trump. Remember Trump? Yeah. Hey, oh, Trump, Trump, come in. Or, or that's up there with turkey. Yeah. Oh, we couldn't say Jab, turkey. turkey. And Jab, we couldn't turkey. say monk with. Yeah. Couldn't say what? Monk with. I, um, don't be monkeying with me. I don't mean oh. monkey around. Oh, we yeah. couldn't say that. I'm going to see the Migos. <laughs> yeah, you can't go see the Migos. You can't go see the Migos. You got to take your little girl to see the Migos. You got to take somebody Virginia, with you. Junior, what am I going take... to be doing? <laughs> watching them? <laughs> What you say, Junior? You, you're sitting in there looking over your glasses. <laughs> like an old lady. Like an old Who lady. Who the hell is watching the Migo over some weed glasses? He going there. Can't do go. That. Don't, don't go down there and embarrass yourself. Don't do that. <laughs> Y'all ever seen Monica look over a glass? <laughs> yeah, she had that old no, that's lady. That's how she look. was looking at the Migo. <laughs> <laughs> Man, little boy. But, but but with a uh, foam dress on <laughs> and some pumps with an ankle strap. Yeah. <laughs> no. But with a low kitty kitty heel on. Yeah, you cannot go see the Migos. So we got like cut off age, huh? Yeah, yeah everything's to have a cut off. You should have a cut off age. Definitely. Definitely. All right, we'll I'm be back with this. more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, Tommy, Jay, Carl. What's that? What's up? You know what? You know what? We need to give a Merry Christmas to people who are gonna get the gift they don't want to. Fix your face when you open it. <laughs> play it off. Yeah, Just play, play it off. Act, so act, you like, you happy to act get like you happy to get. You gonna socks. get it from your kids? <laughs> bless their heart. That's all the money they had. All right. Oh, <laughs> this lie. Oh, dishwasher uh, liquid. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, uh, oh, I get awesome. that. You gonna you gonna get a face? <laughs> yeah. So we got to play the game. People doing the best they can for you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we go with comedy roulette. Here's how we do this. It's very simple. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Give us five subjects. Five. Put the subjects on one wheel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like to say this part. Where they stop. <laughs> uh-huh. Where they stop, <laughs> we do the damn thing. Okay. Where, wherever they stop, we okay. do the damn thing. Ready? L- yeah. Bring it. All right. All you right. holding up. You holding go. us Let's up. Go. We ready. Number one, uh-huh. white people and their dogs. That could be I, good. I hope it land on that. You want that one? You I want, want that, that one. Okay. <laughs> Two, here we go. Uh-huh. Nasty food. Nah, well, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's good. good. We can make that work. We can you make that work. Steve? Yeah. Uh-huh. You, you listen, yeah. Steve? All right. Mm-hmm. Number three, you got way too much weed. Oh, I got that one. That's good. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Give me that's that my one, please. please. Okay, please. I'm just going to say I had nothing to do with number four. I'm not in this. Number four, women who can't cook. <laughs> Whatever, well, y'all, about you. <laughs> you. Whatever <laughs> with your little wheel. Uh, five, people who come to your house unexpectedly. I like that one a lot. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Spun the wheel. Bun it. All right, let's go, cat. Bun it. <laughs> it better not stop. Going. Come on, women who can't cook. Don't cook it. Come on. Uh, 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 oh, number three. You got way too much weed. Let me start this bad boy off. First of all, you know you got way too much weed. If you spend the entire day, all day, all day of the day doing this right here. Puh, 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 puh. And what is puh? puh. You spit that hair. Uh-huh. Puh, puh, puh. Go ahead, on man. I tell you what, I, I know people like this. Uh-huh. But I'm telling you, you got way too much weave. 
when you leave the when you leave the bathroom and we mistake you for the dog. Who oh. let the dog in here? Damn. Who the hell let the dog? Wow. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Neff, what you got? <laughs> All right. You know you got too much weed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When you sticking your whole hand in there to scratch your head and it disappear. <laughs> What where, where, where did your hand go? Where's your hand? It's your way, hand. It's way, it's way, it's way, way hand in your it's way too much weed. Come on, Steve. <laughs> you know you got too much weed when you spend the majority, the majority of your time uh -huh. patting your head <laughs> like you trying to think or something. <laughs> you know. You got too much weed in your head. Mm -hmm. When you get your head done and the lady says, we're going to need 15 packs of hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get you that link. Yeah, yeah get that. Get that, get uh -huh. that link you want. <laughs> you know, you got way, way too much weed. Uh -huh. Well, we can't keep nothing hot next to your head. Because <laughs> every time you sit around, we got to worry about you catching on fire. Yeah. <laughs> we can't light nothing right on you. You can't be in the kitchen. You got way too much weed. <laughs> we got to be constantly concerned. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Uh, you got, there Jeff. you go. You got way too much weed when you got to go outside and use the yard rake. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get this rake wrong. outside. Way too much. Way too much. Too much weed. Come on, Steve. <laughs> You got too much weed when every time you see a Korean person, you hide from them because you think you owe them money. <laughs> oh, that yucky hair. Yeah. Give me some of that yucky hair. Go ahead. Come on. You know. You know. You know you got way too much weed when you get in your car. And to close your door to back out, uh -huh. and you can't see a damn thing. <laughs> you got too much weed. <laughs> it's all in the mirror. It's all in the mirror. <laughs> you know, you know, you got way too much weed, and I want to be intimate with you, uh -huh. but I got to separate your hat <laughs> to look you in your eye. I got to find you. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Now, Steve, Jay is here. Please introduce him to Murder Another Ladies, <laughs> gentlemen, Murder the Hits. I want to thank you for allowing me to introduce the Fat Panther on this show. Yeah. Oh. But what the Fat Panther did not have was theme music. Right. You cannot be a superhero without theme music. Right. This is the Fat Panther's theme song. Check it wow. out. Jay. Oh, we were back in the 70s. 
jam, boy. Uh-huh. <laughs> just play. Found a message for you. That Panther. I love it. That Panther. Mm-hmm. That's superhero theme song. Yeah, you oh, Lord. That's boy. what he do, because that's what he do. Uh, that a coming down your <laughs> man, this boy. <laughs> this boy touched me, man. All right. And what does Fat Panther do? Yeah. Man? What does he do? Oh, if he's uh, fighting injustices for food. If somebody takes your lunch, <laughs> call the Fat Panther. <laughs> you got a raggedy breakfast, call the Fat Panther. Is the Fat Panther he's... fat? Yeah, yeah. He's Son, how how fat is he? Order in the yeah. drive-thru? The fat Panther will deal with it. <laughs> Keeping his pie on the crime. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> One slice at a time. What? Yeah. That's his slogan. Go ahead, Fat Panther. I love it. <laughs> what you mean they forgot your fries? Call the Fat Panther. <laughs> you introduced him earlier this week on yeah, the show. Yeah, we actually mm-hmm. you can go back to the website and see how he came to work. He was fat, yes. He was fat Panther. Yes. Okay. Fat Panther doing the damn thing. How, How did you meet the Fat Panther? How did this all come about? Well, I was in Paiwanda. I met the Fat Panther. He said, are you, are you looking for someone to do some fight, fat fight crime? And I said, yes. Uh-huh. And he said, I'm the guy. I'm the Fat Panther. And the Fat Panther was born just like that. Coming up, Steve's closing remarks at 49 after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, last break of the day for the last uh, work week. Work day of the week. Um, Steve, you have some closing remarks to leave us with. Yeah, this is how do you get the right equipment and tools and things you need to start out on the road to success? Because everybody could do it, but you have to make the decision. Well, one of the ways is, is I mean, at one point in time, just on a spiritual note, we got to make some attempt to be better. I mean, come on, man. We, you can't keep doing wrong intentionally. You can't just knowingly be on the wrong side of the law. You can't intentionally just be out here just messing over folks and expect, and expect goodness to come your way. I mean, none of us can do that. When I'm wrong, I'm making mistakes. I can't expect, you know, things to go my way. You know, if you're out here and you're just messing over folks, You can't expect not to get messed over. You can't live a life of crime and then be asking for the blessings of God. God can't bless your mess, man. He can't put his finger on that. Lord, as I go out here, go with me, Heavenly Father, as I rob this bank. Whoa, 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 partner, partner, partner. Slow down, slow down. Let's think about this for a second. All of us has a good and a bad side. Most of us know the difference, unless you're ill. Most of us know the difference between right and wrong. Most of us have some type of conscience. Most of us do. Now, to ignore your conscience doesn't mean that you don't have one. Most of us, if we make mistakes, you know, there's there's no remorse, no nothing. You just don't you don't care. You're just going about your life doing what you want to do. It don't work. And you know why it don't work, man? Because God can't put nothing into that. Somebody sent this to me. And I'm going to share it with you because it, it, it's, it's what we're talking about right now. Nobody puts money in a vending machine when it's out of order. Don't nobody do that. You, you sitting up, it's got a sign on it and it says it's out of order. Nobody puts money in the vending machine when it's out of order. So why would God put something in you when you're out of order? Nobody puts money in the vending machine when it's out of order. So why would God put something in you when you're out of order? Now, I'm not saying that God won't put something into you if you make mistakes. I'm not saying God won't put nothing into you if you ask for forgiveness, because he will because he's done it for me and millions of other people like me over and over and over again. God forgives. God God is in the help you get it together business. But wait a minute, man, hold up now. Nobody puts money in a vending machine when it's out of order, so why would God put something in you when you're out of order? When he knows you ain't even trying. See, God ain't crazy. He knows all. He knows your heart. 
There are good people who make mistakes all the time. I'm one of them, I think. I think I'm a good person. But I make mistakes, man. You can be a good person and make mistakes. God know your heart. If But if you out here intentionally walking around, stepping on people, messing over people, using people, manipulating people, but you want something from God all the time, come on, man. You, you don't forgive nobody, but you steady asking God to forgive you. So you just go, you don't, so he gave us the Lord's Prayer. So he gave us the Lord's Prayer, but we all ignore that. And there's two versions of it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I've heard both versions. I like trespassing because it means to go over the line. So forgive us our, you talking to God now. This is the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So now, you don't forgive nobody. Can't nobody do you wrong and ever say nothing to you again. I'll show you you're going to fix everybody that do something to you. Ain't no forgiveness. But then you do something, now you up in God's face talking about forgive me, Lord. I didn't mean. But let me explain to you how he going to do it for you now. He going to forgive you as you forgive those that need forgiveness from you. So give us our trespasses as we forgive. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's clean. That's fair. That's fair. See, God is fair, man. He's very fair. Ain't no loopholes in him. He's fair. If you do this, I can do this. Now, if you ask for forgiveness, he forgives you. Now, when he forgives you, the cool thing is he wipes the slate clean. He don't bring it up no more. That, I, you know how many times I've used that? I can't even count the times I've used that. So now I'm just asking you, how would you not try to do better so God can do it for you? God is going to bless you. He will if he knows your heart is in the right place. Because good people make bad decisions all the time. Good people make mistakes all the time. All the time. But if he know your heart, he'll bless you. Get you try to do better, man. All right, let's go. That's my close remarks. What boy? Just help you, out. you better drop that mic. Y'all have a great weekend. Hey, it I'll- is. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 